And good evening, everyone. ESS Empire State Sports proudly presents the Wise Guy Sports Talk Show. Your host tonight, Joy Ream, Dave Brallett, myself, Pete Gosso, and our special guest, Jefferson Community, Jefferson Community College men's head coach, Joseph Beatty. Coach, welcome to the program. Thank you, Pete. Thanks for having me this evening. No problem. I, 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 I'll try not to interfere. He'll be turning his head once in a while, just let everybody know, because he's keeping his eye on the ball game to his left. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we'll, we'll cheat death there. So uh, let me turn over to Joey and get things rolling. All right, Coach. Uh, glad to have you on. And um, I guess where we want to start is what we do with pretty much every show. The show was created because of what was going on with, in the COVID world. How has uh, COVID uh, impacted uh, Jefferson Community College, not just basketball, but I assume all the sports and what are you able to do right now? Are you able to do anything at all? And, uh, are, you know, give it, give us a little, little, uh, update on what's going on with JCC hoops. Well, thanks for inviting me, Joey, this evening. I really appreciate it. Uh, it gives me something to do this evening, this cold, uh, brutal winter, winter night down here. Um, ah, you know, this, the COVID has affected us in many ways here at Jefferson community college uh, with the number of students that are actually living on campus is uh, is very minimal right now. Uh, we have a, a dorm that approximately houses 270 kids usually and I think we're probably at 50 or so this semester in the spring. We had more in the fall but uh, you know the, the COVID has definitely affected uh, the student athletes and students and people in general mentally too. Um, but as far as sports goes at Jefferson, uh, this spring we're looking to have uh, baseball, softball, and golf that I know of right off the top of my head. They are already they have already started practicing. Um, I know in the fall we were allowed to practice uh, three times a week. You know, individual. No group stuff, of course. Uh, typical COVID protocol, um, and it was uh, it was good. We got the kids in there, you know, got them doing something. Uh, sorry about that, guys. We're back. Okay. Um, it got it got us in the gym, got us working on our game a little bit. Uh, right now, this spring. Gym time is at a premium with baseball, softball, uh, getting in there, you know, and as, a, as you have heard on Channel 7 News, we are currently uh, one of the vaccination sites. So that has uh, thrown a little bit of a wrench into it, but not a lot. But, you know, we're, we're starting back up. I just heard on the news this evening in Jefferson County on the 22nd. Uh, the high schools, the high risk sports are going to be allowed to partic do participation. Uh, Lewis County, I believe, started tonight. Um, I know they got a nice little league. I think they included Harrisville in with them, too, with uh, the four teams, Copenhagen, Lowellville, Bee River, and South Lewis. So the, the kids are getting to play, and I think uh, people are doing a good job getting them back into playing mode. For us right now here, it's it's just a matter of me. I've been on the phone quite a bit with different coaches. Uh, I have to make some more calls evidently here. Uh, just moving forward here in the spring. You'll be interested to know that I am also the golf coach, the interim golf coach this spring. And if you saw my swing, you would probably laugh. So... <laughs> Yeah, I'm not going to lie. That's that's ticking me off right now, Joe. That is ticking me off. <laughs> now, you don't have to be able to play it to coach it, though. <laughs> right, right. But we have, uh, I, I know our athletic director, Mr. Jeff Wiley, has done a great job, guys, uh, getting us through this. He's, uh, well, actually, we have uh, two golf simulators now, too. So it's, 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 there's been some things that have, come out of this that are positive so uh what's what's jcc's home golf course uh i believe the watertown country club is one I, it, it's like different different venues joey uh um, so it's not just one okay 
No, but that's the primary one up in Thompson Park. I know we are playing there. I know we will play at Al the Elms. Um, uh, we play, I think, one match at Willowbrook, maybe um, all over the place. So, uh, cool. Pretty local. Pretty local, you know. So, but well, that'd be, that that is this is this your first time coaching a golf team? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. You got any studs? Somebody, it's a. Uh, you know, going to be shooting a uh, par or better. Uh... I, I think I have a couple. Yeah. The yeah. Uh, Brian Blevins kid from South Jefferson is very, very good. Uh, uh, Sam Arrigo from South Lewis. I uh, hear is very good. He's a good athlete. Uh, Mitch Scoville from South Jefferson. They're all pretty solid golfers. And the, the rest of the team, there's some kids I really don't know much about. But that's a... Uh, that's kind of what you run into at the two-year school. You'll have some of the kids that you recruit and get, and then you'll have a few kids that'll, on every team, not just golf, you know, soccer, basketball, volleyball here, whatever sports you offer at the two-year school, you'll have kids that will surprise you and come in and be able to play. You know, not so much probably in basketball as other sports, but, you know, I, I haven't really had – too many walk-ons here at, at Jefferson that have come in and started or been major contributors. They've been great kids, though. You know, that's that's the big thing. So, what would you um, go ahead, Joe? Well, I I, I was going to say so. How is I guess how is COVID impacting your basketball program? I mean, you didn't have a season at all. Are you, so did. Are you losing some kids that you were expecting to play this year? Obviously, will not be coming back next year. Right now, it, it, it looks that way. Tentatively, I have I had six returners, and I think all of them want to come back. I'm not quite sure what will happen. Uh, let's be honest. Um, I have some kids that are very good academically. Uh, we go, kids go to the two-year school to try and get their academics up, um, you know, and I, I don't know, the, the COVID affected a couple of my kids as far as, uh, you know, they had people that were close to them that passed away and it was, it was tough on them and they couldn't get home, you know, to New York City and it, it was, I think it, I think it threw them for a loop as much as we hate to say that, you know, and, and, Hopefully they can get back on track now. They've uh, been talking with me and we've been working out a plan. And, you know, it's 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 year to year at a two-year school, as we all know. Well, those are some of, you know, some of the little things that you, you're the first coach to say uh, something along that lines where, you know, some of your team was imp really impacted by this in a, in a, in a personal way. So, um, yeah. You know, and, and kudos to you, because I, I think, you know, as, as being a coach all these years, a part of it, part of it is the relationships. That's for sure. Right. I've also there's also another a neat thing, too, um, that uh, COVID has uh, allowed the kids to really get an extra year of practice, shall we say, of individual improvement. Um, you, you know, like I have one young man that. He is transferred up into another Division three school, and he's playing, and it doesn't count towards his eligibility, which is nice, you know, for him. Uh, that's that's going to be a big plus that he really didn't lose a year, and that's what some of the other kids have done throughout the country. I assume the junior college has allowed that, the NJCAA has allowed that, and. I think it can be very benef beneficial to kids that really take advantage of it, coaches that take advantage of it. And, you know, I, I hope things work out for him. You know, he says he's coming back. I hope he does, you know, and if he does, it'll be a, a big plus for us because the kid can uh, really shoot it. And he's a, he's, he was a great kid, you know, with a three plus GPA. So we we interviewed a we interviewed a athlete uh, the other night, coach. Where uh, um, he's playing D one hockey and he was a goalie, 
and he was called up to to D1 in the middle, of, well, I guess the middle of the season or whatever, but they're not counting this 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 year against him, so he'll come back next year as a freshman. Is that what you're finding also, that a possibility there at your level? Yeah, that, that's, that's what you can do. It doesn't count. Nothing counts eligibility-wise. You can still take your full uh, credit load, you know, each semester, and, and actually – it might be a little bit of a blessing, you know, to get these kids on track and get them ahead of schedule um, if they want to stay and take that extra year. You know, as we all know, as uh, uncles, fathers, uh, parents, whatever, um, an extra year of education right now costs just a wee bit, no matter where you go. So I don't know, you know, a lot of kids have aspirations to play professionally, but, you know, my nephew is one that's really taken advantage of this this year. He plays soccer out in Massachusetts and he goes, I just want to get my degree, Uncle Joe, and uh, move on. So, <laughs> you know, it's, it's college is not inexpensive for anyone anymore, uh, especially in these times. So going forward, Coach, you said you might have a possible chance of six coming back next year. Are you going to be able to get, get a full roster for this next season? Uh, because, I mean, recruiting has got to be hell right now. I mean, yeah. you, can't, you can't go anywhere, so you're obviously just looking at tape. So is that a consideration going forward, or, and you're going to be able to have a full roster? Um, I, think, I think I'll be fine with a full roster right now. Um, I also coach soccer um, here at JCC and I'm finding that to be a little bit more challenging to find kids uh, than basketball. Um, I have uh, right off the top of my head, I know three or four kids that wanted to play this year that will be back next year. So that automatically gets my roster almost to 10 right from the start and then add you know, anywhere from 10 to 12 more kids. And then, like I said, there's always three or four kids that want to walk on and try. So I'll have 25 to 30 kids try out for the basketball team. I, I, I don't, I don't know. The only concern I have is when people are going to make decisions or if they're going to try and hold out as I don't know, you guys, uh, the junior college, I know a lot of kids will wait until the summertime anyway. They, they won't make a decision until May or June unless they're really driven, uh, well, well prepared, shall we say, to move on, that, that they'll know where they want to go by May. But there are kids that I usually do get over the summertime that just have a hard time making a decision on whether they want to attend college at all, period. You know, and we, that's the neat thing about the two-year institution. Uh, we can, I can get kids right on, right up until August anyway. So that makes my job, I shouldn't say easier because you're doing it all the time, but it makes it easier in a sense that I can fill a roster. How's that? Were you able to get out and see any um, high school soccer this past season in the in the short abbreviated season we had in New York? I did not. That's that's my fault. I did not. Um, it was uh, nobody else was here to to do things with the basketball, and I just didn't get out, Dave. I just didn't get out. Well, I mean, it was a, it was kind of a short notice and then also a short season too. So you, you, not like you had a lot of opportunity. I have some good connections up in section 10 that I can call. I've talked with a couple of coaches already about their kids, you know, and you know, you know it's, it's a hour 15, probably yeah. hour and a half hour, 45 minutes down here. It's not, it's not like it's a, uh, hop in the car and go from Potsdam to Canton, you know? <laughs> so, right, right, exactly. You know, and plus that, 
you, you know, the restrictions, here's another thing too, guys, the restrictions that you had in place for not allowing people on campus, you know, it's okay, I'm interested, but maybe we got to wait till spring anyways, before you can get on campus to visit, at least. We have a lot of, uh, like most institutions, uh, a lot of virtual tours going on right now. Oh, yeah. Much like this Zoom meeting, you know, so... <laughs> Well, and, and uh, you know, Dave brings up a, a good point, uh, which maybe some of our viewers, when they watch this, they won't realize that the Frontier League in Section 3 didn't have soccer. So, right. yeah, you, you were talking about coming up here because Section 10 did offer it. We were one of the five sections mm -hmm. in the state that played soccer in the actual fall. So, uh, yeah, you would have had to do some driving to actually do some scouting. Well, it's, it's not a bad thing. I probably should have guys. I'm not going to lie, but I didn't. <laughs> I, I, yeah. I, I just didn't feel comfortable getting out there. And I know that, you know, there were some restrictions probably in watching a soccer match also, you know, yeah. so. there were, there were, you need, you would have needed a connection to, to get into a game up here. And, you know, so, right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, just an example, the, the, you know, I live in Old Forge and the soccer field is a block away from my house. And to go watch the kids play soccer, I had to stand outside the fence, uh -huh. you know, to watch them play. That's so. a, that's a very good small school soccer program down there, Old Forge. So mm -hmm. I've, uh, I also referee high school sports gentlemen to, uh, I referee soccer, basketball, baseball. I actually refereed Old Forge versus Faith Heritage at Camden, Dave, if you were there five or six years ago in that final. Um, it was quite fun. And I, I do a, many a job, shall I say. I'm part-time at the college. I officiate. I uh, work for a security company down here. I uh, sometimes dabble in construction, which is not the, the greatest thing in this type of weather, but it does pay some of the bills. So <laughs> didn't I see your photo attached to a real estate agency as well? I, I totally forgot about that. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> I can't keep up with myself guys. So. <laughs> What's the old saying? If my head wasn't attached, I wouldn't find it. So, you know, <laughs> well, Joe, yeah. why don't you, why don't you, uh, why don't you tell our listeners a little bit about your pathway uh, as, as it pertains to, to sports and, and coaching, uh, you know, where you went to school, where you went to college, some coaches that, uh, uh, especially North Country wise, where people that are watching would know that that impacted your life. And, and I know we're going to get to something that is close to uh, Pete and Dave's in my heart is, uh, and I, I got to be honest with you, I knew you, I know you had a SUNY Posse connection. I didn't realize that you were Jerry Welch's undergrad assistant coach with the 85, 86 team, probably the two best teams that ever, uh, two of the three best teams anyway, that, that went through there. So I will be interested to hear some of your stories about that. Oh, um, we can start right out. Well, I went to South Jefferson high school, um, played all sorts of sports, loved it. Grew up on a farm. Um, I just, <laughs> I don't know if you guys, I just don't, there's so many opportunities for kids now. You know, I remember when I grew up, we had a soccer night and a basketball night within our school district, you know, at, at one of the high schools or one of the, the, one of the schools in the school system, South Jeff had, I think we had three elementaries in the high school and our, my coach Arthur really got me interested in uh, coaching uh, basketball, coaching period. He was just a, a big influence on me. Uh, just a great guy and uh, loved, loved him to death. Really, really liked playing for him. I played for Coach Lepar, Tony Lepar, loved him to death. He, he gave me great opportunities. Uh, soccer, we, we, uh, we did quite well in high school. I love that sport. Baseball, uh, I played off and on. It's a uh, it's a, it's an interesting sport. If you're a high school kid, I, I see it nowadays. I coached back at South Jeff here a few years back and uh, there were some dedicated kids. If you like it, you like it. If you don't, you're going to have a hard time playing that sport, I think. But 
then I, uh, I went to a bunch of schools. I, I ended up going out west, playing at a Division One junior college, College of Southern Idaho. I, uh, my sister lived out there on a, a ranch dairy, and I went, stayed with her for a couple of years, played there, played with some real good players. Actually, uh, one of my uh, friends, Fred Emerson, he went and played for Fresno State on the team. My point guard, Dewey Haley, went to uh, Georgia State, and he still holds assist records there only after playing two years. Uh, there was a bunch of Division I guys on there. I can go off with the colleges, Northern Arizona, Utah State, Weber State. Uh, uh, actually, one of them, Ger uh, Gerald Kennedy, went back, played for University of South Carolina. I mean, I've been around some, my, my coach actually ended up coaching San Diego State before uh, Steve Fisher, the old Michigan coach, uh, found out it was very difficult at the Division One level. Uh, I came back to New York. I actually missed my mother and father. <laughs> you know, I, I wanted to be around them. I wanted to be around my family. Uh, my two brothers are still around here. My sister was around here. My other sisters live out west. Uh, came back and played soccer for Coach Dave Rich at Potsdam State. Uh, had a two, good two years. Uh, with Coach Welsh, I tried out. I only had a, a year and a half of eligibility because I, I went to another school before that college of Southern Idaho. And... Uh, I might have been on that team, guys, if I had had two years. I think I would have been, you know, one of those bottom five guys, but I think I could have been on that team. Coach, coach liked the way I played and whatever. But he said, I'm walking down the hall to go to class one day, and he comes up to me and he goes, Joe, you know, in that voice, for those of you who have talked to him, you know, he's like, yeah. got a proposition for you, you know. And I go, what, what is it, coach? He goes, you like to help out with a team? And I go, absolutely. You know, I, I wanted to be around basketball and I knew I wanted to coach and I was going to get my education degree at Potsdam State. Um, so that, that transpired. I worked a couple of years with him. There's some, there's some stories I probably won't talk about, but you know, like coach was such a detail fanatic, you know, I talk with him still regularly, guys. I talked to him last week, matter of fact, and uh, he's doing well. And um, he talks he, he he talks about the old times and everything, you know. And just a, I know there's one story that you guys will probably laugh about. He pulls up to a McDonald's late night, and he special orders a cheeseburger with with nothing except ketchup and cheese on it, right? You know, and he gets it. He gets it and uh, we pull up, he, he pulls up, just, he double checked everything, you know, triple check things and <laughs> the sign of a, a, of a really detailed person. And he opens it up, takes a bite out of it. And, uh, <laughs> you know, he, uh, it has lettuce and it has the works on it. He goes back through the drive, drive through, hands him. And <laughs> it was like, I said no lettuce, no nothing, you know, and and that's that's coach in a nutshell, you know, and every every practice was mapped out to the second, and I mean, there, you know, that team was very gifted. That undefeated team, both teams, the twenty eight and four team the year before were were unbelievably talented, you know, Pony Bullock from Syracuse, Troy Turner. John Leonard, Brendan Mitchell from the Albany area, Tom Conboy. I can go on and on with names. I still sporadically speak with those guys also. Um, Barry Stanton, he was my roommate, actually, guys, uh, the center for that team. Uh, great guy. Yeah, you're, you're uh, saying I, names that we're all familiar with. <laughs> okay, okay. I just Yeah. <laughs> that. You know, I mean, I was uh, probably more connected to that basketball team than I realized looking back. Um, then I, uh, you know, I, I wanted to teach and coach at the high school level. And I came back home, subbed for a couple years, had a couple interviews, uh, thought I was going to get a couple jobs, didn't. Um, 
had some fun at Copenhagen Central uh, with uh, Coach Nancy Henry, great coach. We uh, won a state championship in soccer. It was kind of ironic because I had students taught at Parrishville Hopkinton, and who'd we play for the state championship? Parrishville Hopkinton girls. Um, that was a great team. Both teams were very, very talented um, class D schools. I helped out Nancy and I helped her in basketball. And then I'm, uh, I'm doing this, this subbing career. I don't know if anybody's done that in their lifetime, but it's, it's nothing that I wish for anybody. It's not bad, but it's not anything <laughs> that I particularly enjoyed, but I didn't mind it. And I get a call from coach. He's like, Go, I know you want to coach. Uh, why don't you come back to Potsdam and help out with the girls program? And that's how I got started back up at Potsdam. I coached the women's basketball team. Uh, was it 91, 92, then 92, 93, I took over as a head coach. And that's when I like, like recruiting, not even recruiting. Sometimes people fall into your lap. I know you guys all remember Amy Jo Leonard. You know, she came to Potsdam and um, I had a bunch of other young women that came to play that year that were pretty good kids from JUCO colleges. And my first year, we uh, made the ECACs there at Potsdam and set a national record for our triple overtime game points scored with Buffalo State, who was the perennial power back then. We beat them in triple overtime at home. Uh, hopefully I'm not rambling too much here, guys, but I'm just like, oh, <laughs> like my own little biography. I like this. It's kind of interesting to go through this. But uh, next year we won a division title. Uh, first time that I think any win or any time that a women's team has won a division title in the SUNYAC at Potsdam. And then I was there for 18 years in uh, 2010. Uh, parted ways with Potsdam, um, came down here, got hooked on, thanks to Jeff Wiley, took care of me, and Charlie Bridge, who was coaching uh, basketball, I got involved here, came here, subbed, uh, and uh, the rest is history. Now I'm the, the soccer coach for three uh, sports at the collegiate level. Go figure on that. So. That's it in a nutshell, gentlemen. <laughs> if, hey, this if that's a nutshell. I mean, the nutshell might be overflowing on that one a little bit. But. <laughs> You're on mute, Dave. You're on mute, Dave. <laughs> so what you're saying is it was a it was a pretty direct path from where you were yeah. to where you were. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to call it direct, yes. <laughs> it was it wasn't bad though. I, I think. A lot of people that the people that can stay in a job for 30, 35 years, they're, they're lucky, they're, but they're also good at what they're doing, too. I'm not taking anything away from them. You know, well, and, and go ahead. Diversity, you know, diversity doesn't hurt anybody, you know. No. Having a, having a diverse path, it, it gives you, I mean, definitely a lot of experience and a lot of, you know, you know, lets you look at things now from you know, all different angles, I'm sure. Right. I, I, yeah, I, I think, Dave, Dave, that's a really good point that you're bringing up is that I get, you know, I, I had a different type of student at Potsdam State. I had a four-year kid, you know, that was, uh, once again, I'm not taking anything away from a two-year school for kids, but Usually the, the kids that go to the four-year institution know where they want to be in four or five years, where the kids go to, you go to a two-year school to, to get your feet wet, let's say, right? You know, I mean, some, some kids have, they need that extra year or two to really figure out or figure out they don't want to go to school, you know, after a semester. And I, I don't see anything wrong with it. I, you know, you see these commercials on TV about junior college is being a great way to go. I, I firmly believe that right now. I don't, if you don't know where you want to go or what you want to do, go figure it out for a semester or, or two semesters and live at home, uh, you know, save money. It, it, 
uh, one thing that we all have learned as we've gotten older, money's not any any uh, fun to deal with when you don't have it. I mean, right, guys, you all, you know, when you got to scramble to pay bills, it's it's difficult. It it makes life really, really interesting, you know. And if if you don't if you don't know what you quite want to do, a two year school can get you very well prepared. Like like Jefferson Community College, we're one of the the top rated academic two year schools in the state. I mean, so you're well prepared. Our kids do very well when they get out of here to four year schools. They 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 they're very well prepared. You hit the nail on the head. I mean, I played ball at a two year school and found out that after after one year that that's you know I wasn't ready to be in I wasn't ready to be a college student. Did you go back, Dave, or? Uh, eventually, yeah, I, I did a, I did a little snit in the military and then, you know, as a 40 year old, I got my bachelor's degree, but awesome. You know, I wasn't, I, I was not mature enough to be a college student when I was a teenager. And hence the, the good thing about the two year institution, you figure out if you're ready for it or not. And, uh, and I got to play ball and, and it was great. Yep. But go ahead. Well, you know, Joe, I, I was just going to say uh, I, one of the things that in it, when it when it comes to the athletes, I, I don't I still think people overlook. Um, there's nothing I find more enjoyable and I haven't been to a JCC game in a few years, but I have been down there just to sneak in to watch some college basketball. And you're not mixed in more often than not with a gigantic crowd and you get to watch quality. And as a coach, you, you know what I'm looking for. I'm looking to learn. Uh, but I, I love going to watch North country. I love going to watch JCC when I can. I, uh, Pete and I have done a game down at Onondaga. What a facility that uh, that place is when you guys go down and play at that uh, uh, place. That's on amazing. So, you know, I don't think people realize. And then the same thing with D three, we're talking about kids that really some of them are good enough to be D one players. It just didn't work out that way. And they want, maybe they wanted to play and decided D three is the best place for me to go. I don't think people give enough credit to the JUCOs and, and the, and the, and the yeah. D3s. Well, as you, I've been fortunate enough that I coached the division one athlete here. He, uh, maybe you saw him, Joey, uh, the six ten kid I had. When we went to the regional finals, we beat North Country in the semis and then went and lost to Mohawk in the championship. He was harsh. He pretty much was the whole, not the whole reason, but he was a big reason. Led the nation in blocks uh, both his years here. Uh, just a super nice kid out of Canada. And uh, I have my point guard right now is, has a chance to play scholarship level. I've had probably five or six kids that have went on to division two or NAIA also, which is what I'm looking for here. You know, I want the kids to have an opportunity to go do something what they love. I played college sports and it's, it's one of the, it's one of the neatest things. I still talk with my teammates, some of them, you know, to this day. And that's, I don't want to say it, but that's 40 years ago. Good Lord. But <laughs> Um, but, but I've, had, I've had some real, real nice teams here and the, the level of competition in region three, as you guys know, whether it's soccer, uh, volleyball, our women's volleyball here has been to the nationals twice in the last, I don't know, four or five years. And, uh, you know, Mohawk Valley, uh, Herkimer, Onondaga, us now in basketball, no, North country is always, I mean, the basketball is quality. I mean, it's high level stuff. Yeah. You know, and then you go in the, in the springtime, the Herkimer lacrosse, Onondaga lacrosse, baseball, Herkimer, all these teams, Hudson Valley. I don't know if you've been to that facility is amazing for a junior college, you know, I mean, what year was that? that's just, it's just a, just a, just a really, the region stuff. Go ahead, Pete. 
Uh, he, no, I think he was no. somebody else. <laughs> I'm, trying to do, I'm trying to do some research at the same time you're talking, Coach. Now, um, how long have you been at JCC? I know you. Well, seven years, I think. This would have been my eighth. Okay, so I'm trying to do the math. I'm, I'm really, I'm really. Oh, I'm sorry. There. No, that's okay. We had a we had a kid from um, Section Ten up here at Sam River that played for you. A Antoine. Couple years ago. Antoine. Yep. Yeah. I coached, him, I, I coached him from the third and fourth grade level all the way up to high school. He was one of my players. Um, at every level, I took him to tournaments. And um, I did. I broadcast your game at, at SUNY Adirondack uh, when you and the, your girls team were there one weekend. So I, I coached that, that the, the games you came down. I and it never stuck with me until just now. It's like, wait a minute, I, that's where An Antoine went. So what a, what a super nice kid. He is a fantastic kid. Uh, Hard worker, just a great kid. You watch. He was good to have on the team. He he started off and on, and he worked his butt off, and never just super nice kid. You know, I have some. Uh, I have three Salmon River kids on the uh, soccer team right now, also. So. Uh, Jalen Cook, Mac Lazor, and Caden Connors, all super, super nice kids, just hard workers. I mean, yep, no, all three. Yep. Yep, we're, you know, I'm trying to get a couple more from Coach Cook, and, you know, we made it. That's another, like last year was the first time we hosted a regional soccer game. I didn't like the outcome because we lost the North Country in overtime, but. <laughs> But we had previously beaten them in the regular season, and we, I, I didn't have Cade in that game, and I really think it affected our style of play, Pete, you know, and we, but that was the first time in like 30 years we had gotten hosted a home regional game, I believe, could, might be a little less, but it was, uh, it was good for us, it was good for the program, the kids were excited, and we got to play at South Jefferson, which is, uh, I don't know if you guys have seen that facility yet. It's brand new turf and it's beautiful. Uh, really nice. Um, but, you know, I have some kids. Rick Bear does a nice job of getting kids to me. Does a great job of preparing those kids for college. I had Sullivan boy and Luther boy that played for me the past few years. Great kids. I've had, I've had quite a few Section 10. The Weaver boys from Harrisville. You know, like, yeah, I'll talk about a prime example of Josh Newman played for me the past couple of years, too. And there's a a kid that was, you know, just talented, super talented, very nice, very quiet. He just didn't, you know, he's not, he's not playing anymore, guys. And sometimes that happens, you know, so. And it's, it's, to me as a coach, and I know, Joey, to you too, the kids that don't go on to play that you think can play, it's it's a little disheartening. It's frustrating. It's not nothing against the kid. He, you know, he's super nice. Parents were super nice. I mean, but when you see a kid that talented and you just say, my God, you, you've got a chance to go play Division Three, like we were talking about, Joe. I mean, that's that's – I'd love to see him continue because I think you form like I have and a lot of other people have a lasting relationship with people, you know, and it could, and it leads to, leads to maybe a, a, a job opportunity. Uh, I don't think kids always look at it that way. I know parents do, but that's another thing that I've stressed to my, uh, my nephew who's out in Boston. He, he played for two years. He's thinking about playing again. I go, play. You're going to play, have fun, build build some relate. You never know who's a Fortune 500 guy that might want to hire you, you know, or an administrator or a company owner that wants to make you the boss. You know, you, you don't know where anybody's going to be 10 years, 15, 20 years down the road. You, you never know what that connection may get you. Joe, you, you are you are so right. It is something that I preach to my kids constantly, and uh, and I got to thank Pete and Dave earlier when we started this show. 
Uh, they allowed my my son and uh, and a really good player of mine, Colby Perkins, both good players of mine, but they didn't go on to play. They weren't good enough at the colleges. Toby's at SUNY Cortland and uh, Colby's at Nazareth, but they didn't give up their dream of trying to be involved. And Toby's now the manager of the basketball team for Tom Spanbauer and uh, and Colby's the student assistant coach at, at Nazareth with still a chance to play. And it's something I stress to my kids constantly. I'm like, if you love the sport, it, it, it can't hurt to go just ask uh, or give it a shot. Because like you said, if you can understand your role, something I preach in my program, if you want to be part of something special and, it, and it's not all playing time, man, the, the stuff that can happen, the travel, the free gear, the connections, the relationships, uh, you've really inspired me here, Joe, because I know you're a little bit older than me and, and you got me thinking as I'm sitting here and as you were talking, I'm like, holy Christ, I am the second oldest coach in section 10 now for basketball and you're older than I am. Um, <laughs> and I'm the second longest tenured coach now in basketball. And I hadn't thought about that, but I'm like, geez, Joe's been doing this for a really long time and you're doing more sports than me. And, uh, and you seem still passionate about it and the thing i love joe is i can tell it's more about the relationships for you than you know you've mentioned your winning teams and every one of us wants to mention our winning teams but i think you care more about your players than, than you do even that right i i, I do you, you hit it the nail right on the head there i i, I think it's my job here what would i like to be 24 and 2 24 and 1 every year you know, and absolutely, who, what coach doesn't? But, you know, I get a lot of uh, New York City kids, like a couple of kids right now. I, I think what they're going through, excuse me, guys, with us here at, at, uh, at JCC, they're going to have a, a lifelong relationship with me now. They, they, they feel comfortable with me. Um, I'm connected with their high school coach now. Very, very super nice guy. Uh, and it's just, you, you know, I think they're getting it. They're figuring it out. Um, I, let's go way back. I was playing for that high level basketball team in Idaho guys. And, uh, I was average at best. I worked my butt off though. You know, I, I knew, I grew up on a farm and my mother and father came from the depression era and they knew about working hard and getting things done in family, you know, and that's, I, I <laughs> just, uh, me and my other friend, another farmer that made it out there on the team about the same size as me. We used to win the sprints at the end of practice. We, we knew if we won those sprints, we'd sprint one time, one line drill. And we were done. And the other guys, with all this athletic ability, they're doing five or six line drills. And basically, uh, <laughs> in the locker room, we heard about it, shall we say. <laughs> you know, because coach was like, you guys got to give us better effort. And, you know, Beatty, Schroeder, go ahead, get a drink. You guys sit on the sideline. You're done. You work, you know, so – there's something to be said about working hard, whether it's sports, your job, whatever it may be. And I just, I just, I want to see these, I want to see my kids be good citizens and productive citizens, guys. I really do. It, if we win, it's icing on the cake. You know, I, I, I want to win. When we lost to Herkimer last year, it was uh, crushing to a couple of us. I'm not to the whole team. It was crushing to a couple of these boys because they wanted to get to the next round, you know, and we, uh, we had beaten Herkimer earlier in the season and we didn't go in overconfident. We just, none of those kids had been in that type of situation. You know, it was at Herkimer for any of you who have ever been to a Herkimer basketball game, the, the students are right on top of the court and it's bit, you know, it's very difficult to play there, you know, and that, that's another thing, you know, how, how you control yourself in tough situations. And 
that's what we teach a lot of too. I, I'm also very lucky. You know, I have Matt Gorman that played for the national championship team at Syracuse. I can talk a little bit about my assistants now. Um, he also is the resident director in the dorm. So he's very well uh, connected to these kids, you know, 24 seven, you know, and it's, it's, it's a, it's a big change when you're coming from 10 million, 8 million people to Watertown, New York, you know, and you're in a dorm that sits uh, on top of the hill, not, not very close to many things, you know, but Matt does a nice job, you know, but his job sometimes takes him away from the basketball program. And that's, you know, that coach, when you, you, you're lucky when you get people like that to help you coach, you know, I, um, Andre Brown is another one. He works at the children's home. So he's, he's great. You know, he's got a great temperament. He played at Casanova. He played at Watertown high with that stretch at Watertown high around Matt and Sid Pond, you know, then when Watertown was going to the sectional championship section three and winning a couple, you know, and it's, you know, you guys know that double A section three basketball is unreal with the, the one number of division one kids they put out. So, oh, yeah. but I, you know, it's just, there's a lot of great support. Uh, um, and uh, I try, I try to get around the classes, see if the kids are doing well. I know a lot of the professors now, you know, that's, that's the, that's the, the neat part again about the small institution. You can really, develop a, a good relationship with a business professor, a, a, a science or chemistry professor, a math professor, you know, I mean, you can go on and on that down the road, something may happen. I mean, you can, you can get that at the four year institution, but I don't think it's as readily easy to get it. So I know your son's very lucky to be working with coach Spanbar. I know he's done a great job of coaching for however He's been in it a long time also. You know, he's just a great coach. He's very intense also. I'm sure he's very detail oriented too, you know. And now is uh Kobe with uh Mike Dunn at Nazareth? No, Dunny is Dunny at Nazareth? Oh he's in Brockport. Boy. Yeah. You know, um can't yeah, remember, I can't remember the name of his coach now. Sheesh. Right. Not a big deal. Yeah. Well, but, uh, no. I, I mean, I will say, uh, Joe, you're absolutely right. I mean, uh, Toby's pretty lucky. I mean, obviously this year, you know, he's home doing homeschooling because of it. You're, you're doing it online. But, um, yeah, for him to be around Coach Spanbauer, I've been I've been blessed because now I got the connection. I go down and watch a couple of practices. It's And, I, yeah. again, I it, there's part of me I wish – I love coaching myself, but I wish I could – Dive, really dive in to watch local college basketball at all levels because it's so good uh, but it's just so hard when you're coaching it yourself to, to be able to enjoy it but um well coach pete, we got, pete, we got a question one. for question for pete and dave y'all sure he he drives all the way to Cortland when he can come here he can go watch uh coach chris <laughs> at north country but he's gonna drive all the way to Cortland and bypass us doesn't even stop say hi a nice guy huh i think he just changed his mind for him yeah <laughs> <laughs> hey, all right you're right you're absolutely right man i you I'm deserve uh, you, you deserve me in the crowd at some point and if we get oh, back to normalcy i i'm gonna do that so that's i'm maybe, just giving you a hard time coach i know maybe, it's tough. maybe pete and dave uh, and i can go broadcast a game there Absolutely. Uh, it's, That's it's, something we've definitely talked about once. I mean, I think, I think pre COVID, I think we took it, we took for granted, you know, how much great basketball and great sports there are right around us, you know, you know, and I, I mean, I, I speaking for myself, I know I didn't, I didn't take advantage of going to watch, you know, all the, you know, games that I, sh that I probably should have, you know, but once this is all done, we've, I mean, we've talked about it, the three of us, but I think the road trips we're going to have once we get done. You know, <laughs> and I think we're going to hold each other to it too. So yeah, we'll definitely be down. Well, uh, I appreciate that guys. Um, it, it's funny you bring that point up too. I mean, I've been around, I wish some of this information would uh, rub off on me, I guess, but you know, I, 
I was very lucky to work for Coach Welsh. Had a great relationship with Stan Cohen. Super, just super nice guy. I know, I know Brittany, his granddaughter that works there now at Potsdam. I, I talk with Hal very sporadically whenever I see him. Um, I was fortunate enough to watch Bill Myrna, Steve K. Mack, Jerry Horahan. I, I used to go if, in college even when I started working for coach. I, I'd go watch those games just to, you know, I'd go by myself. I, over to Potsdam to watch Coach K Mac on the sidelines was worth the price of admission. You know? <laughs> yeah. And and then, uh, you know, Con Elliott, I used to sit with him. I, I'm sure you guys know Con. I mean, North Country icon. Um, Legends. Legend. You know, I, I didn't, I didn't know a lot about, Chattagay. I know Coach DeBenville from St. Lawrence. Um, I'm just trying to think of what other – Madrid, you know, Coach Charlie Clark. I was good friends with him. His son helped me coach. Okay. Um, you know, used to help me coach Ryan, who was a hell of an athlete. You know, all Charlie's boys were good athletes, you know, and just go watch these – Section 10 has had great coaches. I think in any area you can go, but they were very blessed at that time, you know, and even, uh, you know, Rick Carlisle's come out of there. Uh, Kevin O'Neill came out of the North country. Uh, I mean, you can, there's some, some hidden gems, I'm sure. And then you, you have all these division one uh, officials coming out of the North country now too, the luckies. And uh, I believe it's uh the Farrell boy, right, is a Division One, and Trevor Bacon is now a collegiate ref and high school ref in Syracuse from Messina. Um, I know there's other the other the youngest lucky is an official up and coming. Uh, I mean, there's there's a lot of great avenues that you can use sports for, guys. I guess that's what I want to end on. I think that's the thing that I like. One of the best best things I like about coaching is that. You can really use collegiate sports, high school sports, to get somewhere. And I don't know. Some people think about going pro all the time, and they they can't. You know, you gotta think about what it can do for you academically, uh, mentally. You know, down the road, what it, what it, professionally, what it's gonna do for you. You know, it op opens up a lot of avenues, opens a lot of doors. Sports really has been my life, and. Uh, I hope to continue coaching and uh, coach. I love coaching and doing, doing it on a, a regular basis. And I appreciate you guys having me this evening. So. Well, Joe, we, uh, we appreciate you coming on. We got, we got to wind down, but uh, man, some great stories. And, and like I said, my season officially starts tomorrow. Uh, and I've been looking for some inspiration. Uh, you just gave me some. So I, I, you know, I'm excited to get back in there again and, and really for no other reason, just to see my boys. I mean, it just, it's been too long. Uh, no I, spectators, I, right? No, uh, yeah. Unless something pops up, that's going to surprise the heck out of me. No, no, no spectators, but. I need to know who to recruit this year, coach. There you go. There's my, yeah, there you go. All right. I'll do, I'll do my part. Hey, and, uh, and, you know, before we get off here, I want to thank you. Uh, it, it, something we didn't talk about. Uh, J Coach Beatty runs a, a great summer tourney when things are normal. Uh, the Brazier boys were a, were a common uh, yes. site down there for a three-year stretch. And some of the best photos I've got of my boys uh, were winning your tourneys, Joe, a couple nice. of years in a row and beating OFA to win one of them and Carthage and we beat some big schools. That was a real special team that I had. And, uh, and I know that, uh, my kids always looked forward to going there, but boy, my parents really look forward to going there. Cause they use that as why well, Watertown's far enough away. We'll spend the night in Watertown. So. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of Sundays I came in there, not prepared to coach. Let's put it that way. <laughs> That's that's another story, Coach. So yeah, it is. But those were good times. And again, that's that's those are the little things about sports that uh, that we all love. It's the uh, it's not just the games. It's all the, the relationships, and the friendships, you know. And I know you guys. I want to mention this name. He's a real close friend of mine, and he 
does a lot of talking with me is Brian North. Yep. He used to coach at General Brown. He doesn't anymore, but he helps me with my camps, uh, attorneys. He's just a, a super nice guy, and he's been been a real a real big influence on me. You know, is we talk a lot about like, like this. We talk about a lot of these stories, but we also talk about why we coach. So I coach for the kids. Glad you mentioned Coach Norts. I'm going to add him to my list when we can uh, possibly hope maybe we can get him on sometime. Oh, you, you would love him. Yes, that would be great. Well, Coach, it's been, a, it's been a fantastic quick hour. I've never seen an hour go by so quick. Um, we, want to, we really appreciate you coming on. We wish you nothing but the best uh, with your upcoming season. And hopefully when this gets all done, we got a little over 80 shows now. We've been invited all over the United States. I'm sure we're going to be taking road trips, and your, your stop is going to be one of them. All right, guys. Once again, thank you very, very much. It was uh, a trip down memory lane a little bit for me, and, uh, you know, I really appreciate the opportunity that you gave me this evening to talk about myself and uh, the program here at JCC. That's what this is all about. Thanks a lot, Coach. All right. Have a great night, guys. That's going to be it here on ESS Empire State Sports and the Wise Guys Sports Talk Show. For Joey Real, I'm Dave Brown, myself, Pete Gosler, and our special guest, Coach Joe Rady. Have a good night, everybody, and stay safe. Good night.